Pastor Jason. I was excited that he was going to vacation because that meant I got to come to one of my favorite churches in the world and share the Word of God with. Yeah, that's okay. And, and, I, and I really mean that because yours is about the only church that ever asked me to come and speak. So. <laughs> so I appreciate each and every one of you. It's good to have you here this morning. Why don't you do me a favor and look over at your neighbor and just let them know how much you appreciate them. Just tell them, say, hey, I appreciate you. How many of you know that it's good to be in God's house? Amen. There are so many things in this world that, that can get our attention, that, that strives for our attention, that, that if we're not careful, we can chase after things that, that really don't matter. And maybe I'm the only one, but has anybody else in the house ever found themselves chasing after something that, that really doesn't matter? Amen. I remember several years ago when Nikki and I first moved to Jackson County, we had a Siberian Husky named Nikolai. Any dog lovers in the house? All right, so you guys are definitely going to be able to relate to this story. Uh, Nikolai, the Siberian Husky, was a crazy dog. He had the crazy eyes and everything. And, and when we first moved to Wellston, we moved from the country to the city. And, and Nikolai was adjusting to a chain. And, um, and he got loose. And we lived in town. And come to find out that that's not very widely accepted in town. So... So I look out and I see Nikolai and I see him with half of his chain hanging from his collar and, and I look at him and you know how we do as pet owners. Nikolai, come here puppy. And the whole time you're like, he ain't coming, he ain't coming. But, but you're, you're trying it. And then your dog looks back at you like, Whoop, and you know it's about to get bad. Am I right? So then you try it, you try it a little, a little, a little more calm. But, Nikolai, baby, hey, come here, puppy. You want a treat? Nikolai's like, mm-hmm. And you know what they do. You know, they, they hear the word treat, and they're like, maybe. And they're like, no, this is a trick. So I take a step toward Nikolai in my new neighborhood, and Nikolai goes like this, mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, the chase is about to get real. Now, I was much younger then than I was now, but mind you that I was barefoot, I was in shorts, and I don't even remember if I had a shirt on, and I'm in a new neighborhood. And the next thing you know, Nikolai takes off running as fast and as hard as he can through my new neighborhood. And I'm like, oh, no, you didn't. Puppy? Puppy? And I began to chase Nikolai all through, all through the new neighborhood. And Nikki is just out on the porch like, oh, my God. What is he doing? And, and she tells me the story because when you're in the moment of chasing something, you don't really realize how ridiculous you look. You know what I mean? But, but it was like an old-time movie, she said, because she would see Nikolai dart from behind a house, and he, and he looked, you know, he looked beautiful. And then here comes me, Nikolai! And it was crazy. And the chase lasted for a long time. A long time. How many of you know that you can get caught up in a chase that, that will cost you way more time than you really should have spent? You've exerted way more energy than, than you really cared to exert. And, and I thought this thought once I caught my breath, and it took me a little bit. But I thought this, how many things in this world do we chase after that only leave us hurting or humiliated? And those are the things that we must resist chasing after because I promise you, at first, it seems like a really good idea, doesn't it? Doesn't it? The things we chase after? So today I'm going to preach to you this message that I've entitled, Chase the Chariot. Look at your neighbor say it's all about the chase. Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40, I'll be reading out of the message version, says this. Later, God's angel spoke to Philip. Look at your neighbor and say, Philip, at noon today, I want you to walk over to, the, to that desolate road that goes from Jerusalem down to Gaza. He got up and went. He met an Ethiopian eunuch coming down the road. The eunuch had been on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem and was returning to Ethiopia, where he was a minister in charge of all the finances of Candace, 
queen of the Ethiopians. He was riding in a chariot and reading the prophet Isaiah. Now the spirit of the Lord told Philip, climb into the chariot. So running up alongside, Philip heard the eunuch reading Isaiah and asked, Do you understand what you're reading? He answered, How can I without some help? And invited Philip into the chariot with him. The passage he was reading was this, As a sheep led to slaughter and quiet as a lamb being sheared, he was silent, saying nothing. He was mocked and put down, never got a fair trial. But who now can count his kin since he's been taken from the earth? The eunuch said, Tell me, who is the prophet talking about? Look at your neighbor and say, who could it be? So Philip grabbed his chance. Using this passage as his text, he preached Jesus to him. As they continued down the road, they came to a stream of water. The eunuch said, here's water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the chariot to stop. They both went down to the water and Philip baptized him on the spot. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of God suddenly took Philip off, and that was the last the eunuch saw of him. But he didn't mind. He had what he'd come for and went on down the road as happy as he could be. Now Philip showed up in Azotus and continued north, preaching the message in all the villages along that route until he arrived at Caesarea. Now no doubt that Philip was a man that the Bible describes as being full of the Holy Spirit. He was one of the greatest evangelists of the early church, and he was not afraid to tell the story of Jesus. In fact, he preached to entire cities. He operated in the gift of miracles, and his ministry, if we will allow it, can still continue with us today through God's living word. In a world that is obsessed with chasing the carrot, Philip will explain to us today how to chase the chariot. So the scripture picked up the story of Philip as, as the Holy Spirit was leading him to a desolate place. Wait a second. The Holy Spirit was leading Philip where? I mean, we've already discussed that Philip was one of the early church's greatest evangelists. So surely, surely the trip that Philip had planned to Caesarea must have been God's will. How could God possibly turn around and speak to this mighty man of God and say, Philip, no, I have a different direction for you to go. I, I need you to make a pit stop, and that pit stop avoid, in, includes a place of desolation. How many of you know that there are times in our lives where God will lead us to desolate places? Places that may seem empty, places that may seem useless, like we would never be able to find our purpose in a desolate place. It's as if purpose and desolate places can't even go together. And yet we read in the scripture that that is exactly where the Holy Spirit of God led Philip to. The Holy Spirit will sometimes lead us in a direction that makes no sense. The Holy Spirit will sometimes lead us in a direction that makes no sense. It's like buying an entertainment center from Walmart. We get excited when we get new furniture and, and uh, just, just so you know, lifestyle, our new furniture comes from Walmart and we get very excited about the new furniture. The only thing that I don't like about Walmart is that things don't come pre-assembled. They come in a box and, and we have to put it together. And the only thing we have to guide us when we buy the entertainment center from Walmart is the directions that come in the box. And can I just tell you, those directions are stupid. They're stupid, like they don't even have words. It's just picture directions. Now that might be very, that might be fine for some of you, but I was the kid that kept trying to put the square and the circle peg in kindergarten. I can't assemble things without great directions, and even then I struggle. So, so when I buy the entertainment center from Walmart, I know what I'm getting into. And the directions make no sense. But with my wife's help, 
and several little walk-arounds. Does anybody else have to take walk-arounds when you're putting together something? Several walk-arounds. And several, I think they all include extra pieces just in case they get lost after you put it together. So, so I have several, several pieces. We get this thing together, but, but sometimes, and I found that many times in my life, God gives me directions that don't really make sense. Sometimes I think that we, as God's children, think that our, our faith should be pre-assembled. That our, that our journey should be all put together. And, and the truth is, is that it's not. It's not. It's piece by piece. It's precept upon precept. It's, it's faith step after faith step. And then when we get to the end of this thing, hopefully we can look back and say, hey, man, that's, that's pretty amazing, God, that you took all of these pieces of my life and you made something beautiful out of it. But, but the point is, is that the directions of God don't always make sense. They don't always add up to our plans. They, they don't fit within our planning. And, and can we just be honest with ourselves in this place? We have our own plans. We have places that we want to get to and we're encouraged to have one-year plans and five-year plans and ten-year plans. We're encouraged to do those things and I'm not against setting those goals. But what I'm saying is, what if God wants to go against where your plans want to take you? What if his direction steers opposite from the direction you want to go? Because in my life, if I'm to admit a fault to you in here this morning, I like my plans. I like my plans. I'm a list person. I start up, I wake up in the morning, and just for those of you who are not morning people, which this is 9 o'clock, so you probably are, I am like a chipmunk on crack in the morning. I wake up and I drive my wife nuts and everybody else in the house. But from the moment I wake up, I have my day planned. And if I'm being honest, this is one of my greatest faults. I do not like to deviate from the direction of my plan. And if something in my plan changes, it really messes me up. But you have to hear this. God is not a God who will make your life comfortable because comfortable will lead you to being complacent and the church of God is not called to be complacent. We are called to be moving. So don't be surprised when God changes your direction and messes you up a little bit. I can imagine Philip's thought process. God, I, I was going to Cesarea. I know there are people there who need to hear your word. I know there are people there who need to believe on your son, Jesus Christ. And here we are, God. You're telling me to go to a desolate place? And then what do we as humans do whenever whenever God tells us to do something that we don't agree with. We, well, maybe I didn't hear God right. No, 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 no. Maybe we heard God exactly right, and we're trying to think of every excuse we can to go our own direction. And that's funny to me because it's amazing the directions that we'll follow. For Christmas, my wife bought me this watch. And if you have one of these watches, pretty much what I've learned is you can tell time on it. So if you don't have one of these watches, don't, don't waste your money. If you do, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, it's amazing the directions will follow. Because every once in a while, this, this watch will vibrate on my wrist. And it'll say, time to stand. And it's like, it's like it has me trained now. No matter where, where I'm going. So, so now you know that, that if I'm sitting in church and one day I just... It may be the Holy Spirit. It may be the watch telling me it's time to stand. Either way. Either way. 
I will follow the watch's directions when sometimes I refuse to follow what God has for me. Philip must have thought to himself, God, did I miss you? Is, is my spiritual GPS off? Do we need to do some recalculating? Some of you in here right now, and I know this because God showed it to me as I was praying for you this morning. Some of you in this place right now, God has shown you a direction to take, and you are wondering in your mind, was this really God? I believe he sent me from Jackson, Ohio to tell you that it is from God. Begin to take the step in your faith journey and watch what God does with your life. Look at your neighbor and say amen. In order to be a chariot chaser, you have to be willing to go in desolate places. Philip was obedient. And, and wouldn't you know that as Philip was traveling along the road, this, this desolate, this empty place, a, a road that was never traveled, the road less traveled, if you will, that he ran across an unlikely person in his life. An Ethiopian eunuch in a chariot. At that moment, God told Philip, chase that chariot down. Chase the chariot, Philip. Now, we read these things in the Bible and we're like, oh yeah, Philip, you chase the chariot. What if right now, God was telling you to go out on, is this Route 2 here? What is this? Is this Route 2? I, I don't know what it is. It's bumpy, whatever it is. <laughs> Y'all travel that road too, huh? It's like, ching, ching, ching. I think I lost my right front tire in the one of them. Um, what if God was to tell you to go out to Route 2? And, and you see a semi with the license plate from Alaska, and God says, Chase that semi. Would you do it? Because we read it in the Bible and we don't realize what it's really saying. Philip, there's going to be an Ethiopian eunuch traveling through in a chariot. Now, I know you don't know him, I know you're not friends. But here's what I need you to do. On the desolate road, about 12 p.m., I need you to begin to chase the chariot until you catch up with it. Would you chase the chariot? Because the truth is, in this world, we'll chase a whole lot of things that are a lot dumber, if I'm just being honest, that will yield you absolutely no results. But yet we don't give a second thought to chasing them because in this world, in the moment, in the, in the finite mind, we think that those things mean something. But we serve a God who has such tremendous plans for us that we will never be able to understand necessarily. His thoughts are above our thoughts. His ways are above our ways. And, and listen, when God tells you to chase a chariot, go chase a chariot. Because destiny often lays in the place of that road of desolation. You may think the place God is sending you to is completely empty. And you may miss the destination altogether. I wonder how many of those moments we miss. Because we're, we're busy chasing our plans. We're, we're busy chasing our carrots and and God all along has good plans for us that that we miss out on because we want to do our own thing chasing the chariot may make us look foolish for a minute but it ensures that we will never miss our moment Can you imagine what Philip looked like chasing that chariot down the road? Now, I don't know if the 
I don't know if the Ethiopian eunuch was, was kind of in charge of his own chariot or he had a driver. I, I don't know what was going on with that. But let me tell you, if I see a madman chasing my car down the road, I'm probably not stopping and being like, what's up? Unless I know. Unless I know that that's direct, the direction God has sent me. The Holy Spirit often leads us to people unlike ourselves. The Holy Spirit of God often leads us to people unlike ourselves. Now this Ethiopian eunuch, he was the CFO of Ethiopia. He was in charge of the entire financial system of Queen Candace, the queen of an entire country. And Philip had an opportunity to minister to him. Often we don't go to the people that God is calling us to go to because of our own prejudices. Now when I say prejudices, that may, that may mean something different to you. Maybe that means skin color. Maybe that means, uh, maybe, maybe that means a financial situation. Maybe that means the way an individual looks or, or activities that an individual is involved in that, that, that make you uncomfortable, that... That, that if you're honest with yourselves, and I think we need to be in the church and acknowledge that at some point we all have prejudices. You heard me. You heard me, right? I, I think we need to be honest with ourselves and, and acknowledge the fact that there are certain people that we get around that, that we don't even really know them, because, but because they may look a little different than us or act a little different than us or believe a little bit different than us or have a different political view than us, they make us uncomfortable. And, and, and rather than stepping beyond our prejudices many times, we sit back on them because we don't like being uncomfortable. We, we like clear and plain directions. But God, when he sends you to a, de a desolate place, he may have a diverse person for you to minister to. And we have to be open to that. We have to get beyond ourselves. If we want to chase the chariot, we have to get beyond ourselves. John chapter 3 and verse 30 says this. It says, it says we must decrease so that he may increase. In other words, we must put our feelings on the back burner when we are running hard after God. Because there are so many times when our worldly feelings won't match up with God's kingdom mindedness, when the things that he has for us. So back to the Ethiopian eunuch. Somehow, somehow this Ethiopian eunuch, he got his hands on a copy of the writings of the prophet Isaiah. I don't know if he bought a copy in the temple. I don't know if he bartered and traded for it. I don't know. I, for all I know, he may have found it laying alongside the road. But as Philip ran beside the chariot, looking like a complete fool for Christ, as he ran up to the chariot, he heard some familiar words. He heard the prophet Isaiah as the, filio, or the Ethiopian eunuch was, was attempting to get through the words and to simply understand. And he couldn't. I truly believe that there are still a lot of people in this area and in our world who really, really want to understand God but simply need somebody willing to explain him to them. And as you explain God to them, please make sure you're doing it in the right way. Amen? Chasing the chariot will give us the chance. But it's up to us to grab it. Listen to what the scripture said. It says, the eunuch said, tell me, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or some other? Philip grabbed his chance. Did you hear me? Philip 
grabbed his chance. In that moment, that, that brief moment, that simple question, who is the scriptures talking about? Philip grabbed his chance. Can I tell you that the church, that we as individuals, we need to grab our chance to tell people about Jesus Christ and everything that he is and everything that he will be. We need to take advantage of our opportunities and grab hold of the chances that we are presented with. Look at your neighbor and say, take it to a different level. There's a, an amazing phenomenon among men. Two men that don't know each other very well, standing beside each other, kind of the awkward moment type of thing, right? You know, I mean, uh, Ryan, I, 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 seen, I seen Ryan today, and I was like, hey, I complimented on his jeans. You know, we're, we're secure like that, you know what I mean? But, but, you know, you walk up to a guy you don't know very well, and you say, hey, nice jeans, <laughs> That's just not how men start conversations. So, so men, if you can imagine, as, as, as we're sitting behind or we're sit, standing beside that other man that we don't know very well, inevitably, one of us is going to say something about what? The weather. The weather. Oh, can you believe this weather in May? Jeez, it's cold. It's, it's rainy. And, and we begin conversations conversations like that. Now women, you're not off the hook. Because women usually start with a compliment. Am I right? Oh my gosh. I love your hair. Men can't do that. Women, it's cool. You go. Where did you get those shoes? Girl. You know, you know what I'm saying. And, and women, it's okay to begin your conversations like that. And men, it's okay to begin talking about the weather because it's kind of non-intrusive. You know, men just can't be, have you been working out, Jake? <laughs> men, can't, men can't get by with that. Can't do that. Here's my point. It's okay to start a conversation like that, but don't leave it like that. Look for those simple God opportunities in your life and grab your chance like Philip did. As Philip was running beside the chariot as fast as he could trying to catch up with it, he didn't know how this conversation was going to begin, but he grabbed his chance when the eunuch said, who is the scripture talking about? We must be willing to take our conversations in this world to a different level, to another level level, one that is not superficial, one that is not necessarily easy, we must be able to grab a hold of our chance to tell the world about Jesus. In order to be a chariot chaser, we have to take our conversations to a different level. When I read about Philip, I thought to myself, God, this is what you want the church to do. This is what you want your church to do. Philip, a man full of the Holy Spirit, was willing, listen to me, he was willing to deviate from his plans and go to a desolate place. He was willing to step beyond himself. He was willing to allow himself to decrease so that God may increase. And he was willing to go to somebody who was a diverse person, somebody unlike himself. Philip grabbed a hold of his chance and took the conversation to a different level. desolate places, diverse people, different level. Desolate places, diverse people, different level. 
was not that the great command of Jesus? Go ye therefore into all the world and make disciples of all nations. And he gives us Philip as a perfect example. Now I don't want to leave you hanging without telling you this. At the end of the scripture, I don't know if you remember reading it or not, but, but Philip witnessed such a great miracle that is so often overlooked. So often overlooked. The Bible gives an account of Philip having a uh, Star Trek moment. It says that all of a sudden after the Ethiopian eunuch was baptized, professing his faith in Jesus Christ, that, that Philip was gone. It was like beam me up Jesus moment. And Philip turned up sometime later and it's just like the next time we see Philip he's in Caesarea. Listen, if you follow God's directions, God will always make sure that you get to where you're going. Always. And maybe faster than your plans could have got you there. Do you understand that? What does God want from the church? He wants us to be chariot chasers. He wants us to be willing to chase the chariot. I am. I am. How about you? How about you? Now, in order to do it, we're going to have to make some drastic changes, church, in our lives. We're going to have to. It's, it's going to take God because... We can't chase the chariot on our own. We'd never catch the thing. But it's the willingness that God wants right now in this moment. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to open up this altar. I want to open up this altar to anybody who's ready to chase the chariot. If you're, if you're willing to move beyond yourself, I want you to get up out of your seat right now and come up to this altar. Thank God. Thank God. Lord, we want to chase the chariot. We want to make a difference in this world. for everyone who came to this altar and Lord those who, who may, maybe couldn't have but wanted to 
Lord, I pray that your church would begin to chase the chariot like we never have before. Lord, that your church would decrease as individuals so that you may increase. Give us direction, Father, and allow us to have the courage to run after it with everything that we are. No matter if it makes sense, let us pursue your will. I wonder if there's anybody in here this morning that maybe you came to this church and and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Maybe you don't understand everything there is to know about God and, and I want to let you know that that's okay. The Ethiopian eunuch, he didn't understand everything there was to know about God, but this is what, this is what he understood. He understood that he was not meant to do life on his own and he understood that there was sin in his life that was separating him from God. And then Philip began to explain to him, we have all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God, but we serve a God who is so full of mercy and grace that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, so that every single one of your sins, everything that is separating you from the creator of the universe would be annihilated and wiped away in one moment that only Jesus could do. I need you to hear me because you can't live a good enough life to get to God. None of us can. It is all based upon the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. If you're sitting in this place right now, and you don't know everything there is to know, but you know this. You know that you want to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. I want you to lift up your hand on the count of three. Don't let anything hinder you. Don't worry about the person sitting next to you. This is between you and God. This is your day. On the count of three, get those hands up in the air. One, two, three. I see those hands. I see those hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if, if you raised your hand, I want to lead you in a prayer. And I need you to understand this, that it is not the prayer that saves you, but it is the belief in your heart in Jesus Christ. And he promises to come in and to change your life and to make you a brand new creature, that old things are passed away and all things become new. So if you raised your hand, would you say this prayer with me and mean it from the bottom of your hearts? Those of you who are already saved, help us out. Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning not knowing everything about you, but this one thing I know, I need you, Jesus, to be my Lord, to be my Savior. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I'm a brand new creature. I turn away from this world and I turn toward God. Thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy. In Jesus' name, I am saved. I am set free. I am delivered. Somebody praise God in this house. Amen. Amen.